Welcome back to the Nutramedical Report, and uh, we have Kim Alexander with breaking news. We'll be joined very shortly by Jonathan Call. The book is called The Harbinger, The Ancient Mystery That Holds the Secret of America's Future. Uh, and it's a revelation uh, that starts with 9-11. And, of course, everybody can uh, know that if they've listened to this program and know that I was the exit examining doctor, the sole exit examining doctor for Special Forces in Delta and the special uh, chemo, uh, chemical Special Forces agents that came back from the Murrow Building in 1995, that I was persecuted in as little as five years ago, almost put in federal prison for coming against Judge Mache. They know how bold I had to be in order to stop them, literally threatening that I would bring out the truth and not being afraid. If you're a real believer in either your physical death, your persecution, or your suffering, and again, we have to understand that we don't save ourselves by our blood like the Muslims think. We save ourselves only by serving the Most High God. And we are getting, as we say, warnings from the Most High that America is on the verge of destruction. So tell us the latest of news. And Unfortunately, I'm sure you don't have good news, uh, but it is more warnings to America that as we sit on the precipice in 2012 of a disastrous election of either the abominator, the abomination that may desolate, or the white horse prophecy fulfillment in Mitt Romney. Mittens, I call it Skip Hananiah Romney, uh, the flip or flip Hananiah Romney that flips on every issue, Hananiah being the false prophet that broke the yoke off of Jeremiah, and later Jeremiah came back with the yoke of steel that couldn't be broken off. Uh, tell us what's happening right now well, as we speak. We, we live in a time when to be an alarmist is to be a realist. Yeah. And that, unfortunately, uh, seems well, to be quite I, factual. I, I, uh, literally, my training as a trauma burn doctor is very good for what I have to do now as a prophet, doctor, and geopolitical analyst because I sit waiting on God to not only bring people like yourself, but uh, to bring clarity to these issues and to bring forth people that will help to clarify it so that, as I say, my people perish for lack of vision, you're trying to bring vision. And the fact is these news items that are happening are happening in a pattern that, in a sense, is God speaking to us like he did to ancient Israel to say, Repent, O Israel, for I have set upon you the destruction that's coming your way because I have sent forth the king of Babylon and all his armies to destroy you. And the fact is that America, with our current leadership, is literally asking for God to destroy this country. Well, I, uh, it, uh, we seem to be headed there. Yes. I have uh, several things to tell you, and none of which, of course, are, are good. Right. Um, uh, now, last night, uh, and I was one of the first news blogs to break this story, uh, Netanyahu at the last minute tore up the agreement to call uh, an early election and formed a unity government with the main opposition party, which shocked everyone. Uh, today, and, and what I said last night was he was getting his ducks in the row for uh, the big coming war. The Arab world uh, seems to agree with me, uh, The getting from uh, the media in the Arab, Arab world. They see this Israeli unity government as a precursor to an Iran strike, um, and it harkens back to uh, the unity government that was formed on the eve of the 67 war, and literally the next day the war broke out. Um, it, uh, you keep in mind, last week we had the breaking news about Israel calling up its reserves. Yeah. That was published, published on one Israeli newspaper site, and then the Israeli military censor kept I mean, absolutely slapped an ironclad lid on that story. It has not been reputed. So if it, if it wasn't true, it would have been reputed, and it was widely published by all the alternative media. But there has not been a single word about any military co-op uh, since then. And the, the Western mainstream media, which is globalist-owned and to me in many cases Zionist-run, uh, is not reporting this. Now... Tomorrow, they are having a major military drill in Tel Aviv uh, uh, for incoming long-range missiles. Uh, about a week and a half ago, they had, uh, uh, they had uh, the gas leak uh, in Tel Aviv, which was uh, uh, almost certainly a drill unannounced. Uh, they're getting ready. 
and uh, they're getting ready rapidly. Uh, they, by the way, uh, they have been digging some very deep tunnels. Uh, they have a underground railway they're building. It won't be completed for a couple of years, but large sections are completed. And uh, I've been in Moscow, and I, I knew what to look for because I'd read about it long before I was there. But their subways in Moscow are very famous. They're, they, you know, they think they're very fancy. Well, they're compared to New York City. They, they are, but not compared to Montreal. But anyway, they're extremely deep. And like, you take the longest escalator I've ever been on in my yeah, life. Yeah, it's crazy. They're all by bomb tunnels, basically. Yeah, of course, of course, that's what they are. That's why and every that's apartment building, really by the way, it takes a, years to get an apartment in Moscow. Not because it, their construction is poor. In fact, it's so good. They're hard and concrete so good they can't build a building that doesn't have bomb shelters from incoming nuclear missiles anywhere in the Soviet Union. And by the way, I don't believe the Soviet Union ever went away. As the Russians and my friends that are in the Eastern Bloc countries tell me, all these leaders did was change hats. Uh, could could well be. Uh, could That's well what they be, told me. That's their own words. I mean, I'm talking to people who are know, former I, I have, technical and other people from, from Eastern Europe and, and oh yeah, Russians yeah, they change, the, change, change. The top people just change hats. And well, they fact, were people, they were communists, you know. But here here's the thing: uh, um, Israel also has uh, on Sunday a senior um, Israeli military officer warned Hezbollah that. Uh, if it responded in any way to an Israeli attack on Lebanon, uh, they would absolutely destroy uh, or, uh, uh, an Israeli attack on Iran, that, they, that the Israelis would absolutely destroy Lebanon, and that the villages would take 10 years or more to repair. Um, so this, this is one more red flag that a war is getting very close. They're laying the law down now. One well, I, I know time. they're, they're, they're failing with trying to remove the regime in Syria. And the only way they can actually haul Europe and America into a war now is that they start a regional war against Assad because well, Assad's and, regime. And, 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 and as I, I, I said earlier before we went on, the Turkish prime minister has, uh, has just said yesterday, and it's just being reported today in the Western media, uh, that he is prepared now. He's ready to ask NATO for military intervention uh, in Syria. Now, this is, uh, he, this is the Turkish prime minister, a full member of the North Atlantic Treaty Organization, NATO, is saying that he is prepared now to ask NATO to militarily intervene under the North Atlantic Treaty Organization uh, against Syria. And uh, that is a bombshell in and of itself. Syria is right. the back door to war with Iran, and of course right. that is the war well, the back door to WW3. Two months ago, Russia completed their early warning radar system for uh, a NORAD, which basically, I mean, so the NATO to come in and do, it's called an air campaign. Uh, Russia's already pre-placed their Yakutsk hypersonic cruise missiles there on the coast. Uh, the Russian base, which is, is, is right at the Syrian coast, the largest base in the Middle East is at, in Syria. They're prepared. This is a proxy war, not with a distant cousin of Russia. This is literally a war where Russia said, yet. And the Chinese have said no and said an attack on Iran is an attack on China. Because they the know. Russians have a large military force on the border with Georgia and another large military force in Armenia. The Armenians border that their base is right on the border with Iran so they can cross the border to support Iran. But the, the large military force on the border with Georgia is designed to blast through Georgia to reinforce the, Arme the Russian force in Armenia and to go into, uh, directly into Iran. Now, this is as serious as it gets. This is more dangerous in the Cuban Missile Crisis. Yeah, exactly. Amazing. The Russians say Steve. this is a matter of vital national interest. That Jim, I want you to stay right there. Uh, we're still waiting for a callback from uh, Jonathan Kahn, uh, who's, I'm sure, is super busy. But we need to continue this analysis. We'll be back in just a minute with Tim Alexander. You're a business.blogspot.com. We'll be on every Thursday in emergency reports like this today. Back in just a moment. Welcome back, and uh, Tim, 
We have some more news to talk about. Uh, this is a very breaking news, and of course we hope to have Jonathan Kahn on soon to talk about the Harbinger. A remarkable expose. And what we're seeing right now, and I want to start this off by actually reading just a little few words of a small scroll, which you're going to see over on clayandiron.com. People say, why is it named? Well, I was told to name that many, many years ago. I received back literally 24 years ago the book Clay and Iron face down on the concrete in my basement back in eastern Canada after coming back from Georgia. And uh, 13 years ago, released it with a prophecy club, uh, released all the uh, profits from all the sale of the books, and there were many, many books sold, I think well over 100,000 and uh, of Clay and Iron, and many, uh, but half that number for the book Abortion to Armageddon. And the first chapter of the scroll is released. There's other chapters that you'll see at Clay and Iron uh, under the the scroll prophecies under announcements. Uh, but what we're dealing with right now is we are right there. We are literally at the time when <clears throat> the America is conspiring, in fact, conspiring with the globalists to start wars, to be a whole golem or a, prophet, a, pro- a prophecy of doom has been literally the harbinger, which uh, Jonathan Kahn's going to talk about, is true. The fact is, though, that this was a self-inflicted wound. Yes, we had involvement that showed, in fact, that the Israeli Mossad was fully aware of what was going on. In fact, I know from my sources that uh, the what we call the Mossad division, the nuclear division of Mossad, which was the trigger finger of the CIA, who actually implanted the nuclear devices in the World Trade Center towers. It was made to look like it was a Muslim plot, but in fact, these were actors who were put in there that were just as dupes. Uh, like Al Qaeda means little toilet. It, no self-respecting right. now, Muslim uh, organization would ever name right. themselves. On yeah, Arab and, uh, slang for uh, little talk. What we have right now in Israel is we have a minority of true, true Torah Jews who are God's holy people, the Jews, but they're not the entire family. People don't realize that there's two houses to the house of Israel. There's a house of Judah and a half tribe of Benjamin, because the other half, if you read your Old Testament, were literally slaughtered because they had done a great dishonor in the in the, in, in God's kingdom. And remember how how they, they had done things like taking the wives of the people of Shiloh and uh, uh, taking them hostage. So people have to understand what happened then. They have to also understand that the ten northern tribes were so apostate that God let them be taken first over a hundred years before the invasion in Bab- of Babylon that eventually took the uh, took the, the uh, Jews. The Assyrians uh, scattered the, the peoples of the northern ten tribes all the way from the Isles of the Hebrides in Ireland all the way through to the Caucasus Mountains. And so all of the peoples of the northern ten tribes were scattered literally for thousands of miles and ripped up from the land and spread all the way from the Hebrides of the Isles of the Hebrews uh, through to the Caucasus Mountains and through Russia. So those are uh, the uh, the peoples that ended up throughout Europe with the apostate Druidic priests, which are the apostate sons of Aaron, became their, quote, overlords, their spiritual overlords through the Dark Ages. And uh, the... Israelis, unfortunately, with 1,600 years of apostasy in Babylon, absorbed much of the satanic rituals and the Kabbalistic uh, perversions of the understanding of the true uh, meaning of the, uh, of the, if you want to call it, the, the star signs that literally we talked about. With, the Kabbalah uh, is, is, is satanic. Yeah, but there was, a, there was a proper understanding that we talked about with Jonathan Kahn about the actual star signs indicated the actual gospel. And they perverted it because all the courts of Europe and all of these other people were literally led by viziers, which are wizards, if you want to call it, wizards or viziers. And believe it or not, most of them came from Saudi, I call it E-Saudi Arabia, uh, which is why, this, because they were the most violent and vile people of the Middle East, and they weren't the natural kings of the area of Saudi Arabia, but they were in alliance with the British. Uh, the British said, they're the worst of the bunch here, so we're going to make them the rulers. And so they literally... the Saad family and all their different kings and, and princes, and there's thousands of them, uh, are the appointed rulers by the oligarchy of the Brits and the European banksters that were behind all of this. And now they're getting ready for the chaos to start a war, to crash the world economy, and move us toward a biometric world currency. Now, people have to understand, when we look at books like The Harbinger, it's very true. It talks about Isaiah 9.10, and I want to pull out Isaiah 9.10 so people can see what Isaiah 9.10 means. And it says, talks about this prophecy that is the center point of the book The Harbinger. And uh, let me read it. It says, uh, uh, here it is. 
Uh, here it is. And I'll read, uh, I'll read the, chapter, the verse before. It says, And all the people shall know, even Ephraim and the inhabitants of Samaria. Of course, uh, uh, my title, if you want to call it, as not only as Dr. Deagle, is the witness of Ephraim. Ephraim, which are the northern tribes of Israel. So, And all the people shall know, even Ephraim. In other words, there was a war going on between the two brothers, the two houses of Israel, between Judah and Ephraim, which is the northern tribes, and the inhabitants of Samaria. And people have to know also that the Kohens are Ephraimites. They're not Jews. They went and, and intermarried with the Jews. They came down and lived in, in Jerusalem, but their primary lands were north in Samaria and then around Lebanon in the north of, of uh, the, the area of Jerusalem. And uh, the inhabitants of Samaria, and that say in the pride and stoutness of heart, and again, this is a spirit of defiance. In verse 10, it says, The bricks are fallen down, but we will build, we build with hewn stones. The sycamores are cut down, but we will change them into cedars. And of course, cedars are more powerful and deeper rooted than, than the sycamores, which are, can, be, can be cut down because they're not as deeply rooted. And of course, because bricks can be crushed or broken, a hewn stone cut out of the ground like granite, uh, like the hewn stone that they put now in the New World Trade Center, which is a giant block, I think it's like 30 tons or something, a black stone, it almost looks like the Kaaba, and it has right on the side of it Isaiah 910. I mean, that's how crazy this is, that we have a situation where the defiance of our political leaders literally quote Isaiah 9.10, and their defiance of the Most High God. So we have a defiant government, we have high-level Masons who are defiant against the Most High God, and they think, just like the ancient prophet Hananiah, we are strong, Israel shall not be defeated. And when they heard the words of prophecy from Jeremiah going to the court of the king, they, they hauled him off and, of course, said, no, we'll break off that yoke of wood, and you shall not prophesy against the king in this kingdom, because Israel is strong and shall not be defeated. Do and that you, wasn't do, true. Do you know that... Uh this new coalition government, uh, one of the major things that they have said they're going to do is to reform the politics <clears throat> of Israel, which means they're going to eliminate a lot of the minor parties by changing how the uh, parliament, the cassette, is structured. They're yeah. also considering unifying the office of president of Israel and prime minister of Israel, which would de facto make Netanyahu the king of Israel or king of the Jews, uh, uh, which is a but, fitting yeah. title for the Antichrist uh, who will launch so, World War III. So we have to change his name slightly. We'll call him Herod Netanyahu. How's that? <laughs> uh, in any case, he's a nut, and he now has a majority, supermajority of 94 out of 120 uh, members of the cassette, and he has... Uh, three former chiefs of staff in his cabinet and uh, the current defense minister and a former defense minister. He has the most hawkish cabinet in uh, Israeli history. It is his answer to all of the senior former Mossad, the best and military intelligence people that have been screaming, do not attack Iran, Israel yeah, well, will be destroyed. We're coming there and the third paragraph of it says, Did not the fireballs rise from all over my jewel, jewel, heat, brimstone, and the red smoke of the abyss roll? That's the judgment coming to America. We do not repent. to the Neutral Medical Report and uh, Tim Alexander. Of course, I've heard news now that maybe our guest, uh, his wife had gone into labor really, amazingly. So I uh, hope that it's a positive thing that Jonathan Kahn has not uh, had anything negative had, like the prophetic warnings we have. And it is a harbinger. And in fact, uh, just to go through some of the titles of the chapters of his book, and I want to use your blog, uh, Europe Business, with 1s.blogspot.com, uh, the first, of course, is the kingdom and the nine harbingers. It talked about the uh, kingdom's eve. And the harbinger, of course, is the breach, the terrorist, uh, the fallen bricks, the tower, the gazit stone. And they talk about the gazit stone, which is basically a hewn stone. It's uh, basically when they, what they're saying is we're going to put this prophecy of Isaiah 9.10 
And uh, Edwards, actually, who is a presidential candidate, actually made that public statement. It's actually etched on the Gazette Stone in the One World Trade Towers, uh, literally on the anniversary, 2004, uh, it was cut out, 2004 cut out for the One World Towers, and it's actually in the bottom of the towers. You can actually go right up to the Gazette Stone, sitting there with Isaiah 910, literally etched on the side of the stone. That's how amazing this is. The Erez tree ran on Wall Street. Most people don't realize that uh, if you look at the video, which we have the links to, the Erez tree, what happens is the Buttonwood tree, or the Sycamore tree, was the tree in which the 24 businessmen or elders set up the contract to set up and make the Wall Street the most powerful financial center on the planet, secondary uh, to London and in many ways exceeding London in financial world power. The capital of Earth, in, in a sense, is New York City and its center is Wall Street. When the World Trade Centers fell, it literally cut off the roots of the of the uh, sycamore tree and they replaced it with a what's called an Erez tree, which is a conifer tree. And the conifer tree, of course, is a tree that is everlasting. It's like the tree that you see at Christmas. The reason why the Christmas ceremony, it's the ancient ceremony of Nimbus, the ancient ceremony of the of the of the of Lupercalia, the ancient Egyptian ceremony of the wolf. And they put a Babylonian conifer tree there because it's a evergreen. In other words, it doesn't die. So it's a sign that no our financial system will not die. We will survive. We will evolve. And of course they want to evolve into the mark of the beast. And one of the prophetic warnings that I've given uh, which no one else has stated uh, on Earth is that the America, not Europe, not the European Union, not China, not Russia, they all say, oh, where's America in prophecy? Well, America is not only leading the greatest military army on Earth that can bring fire down from Earth, like the uh, the Predator drones that killed another terrorist that was involved with a coal ship uh, bombing years ago, back in the year 2000, uh, but this... Uh, uh, individual who was struck in Yemen with our, you know, CIA predator drones, but America also is going to be the housing and the center point and the control point for the mark of the beast. The virtual super database, which is three million square feet in northern Utah, is actually being set up to house more data centers to augment the central control point at Falcon, Colorado, two miles down at Shriver Air Force Base. Uh, that is the supercomputer array of the Cray-4 and Cray-5 gallium arsenide quantum supercomputer, each Cray-5 equivalent to 100,000 times the computing capacity of a Cray-4. Not in China, not in Russia, not in Japan, where they tell you to tell you that their computing power is the most powerful computer on Earth. It is in America. So the not only is America led by the abomination that shall desolate, I think that the concurrent maneuvers of the current abominator are going to pretty well guarantee with the fact that we have no base, no base to the election of Romney, we are going to be cursed with another term of Obama at the current pace that things are going. And last night when we had the uh, verification very quietly and low-key quiet verification by Centaurum of Romney, we have a capitulation to a high-level satanic Mormon. Now, we have to understand here that of how bad this is, of how our Christian leaders, including Focus on the Family and many other Christian organizations, have said, hold your nose and vote for Romney. No, 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 no. And we need to kind of get a life here, don't we? Some of the few people that stood up were the Council of Catholic Bishops and some, some Christian leaders, most Christian leaders either were silent or they capitulated. And the judgment starts in the House well, of the Lord. I'm not capitulating. I'm not voting for either one of those evil. Right. Well, I can't. I, I can't, in all honesty, vote for either of these fools, all of these devils, these monsters. Now, these... now to be truthful, though, although I don't think it will happen, uh, the I think there may be nomination a has not been decided. Uh, I think it may be a broker convention. I think there's going to be enough consternation starting, and I hope to stir it up even more because we need a Christian leader to bring America back to repentance like the well, king of Nineveh. There, there, there was a story I linked a couple of days ago where Romney has a, a potential felony uh, that could be leveled against him. He registered to vote uh, using his son's unfinished basement. Uh, I think it was either 2006 or 2008, and that uh, was a direct violation of the law in that state, uh, where there was Massachusetts, I guess, uh, because he wasn't living there. It was an unfinished basement, and I mean, the guy's a mega millionaire anyway. 
So uh, we in Indiana, where I live, we just uh, tossed the Indiana Supreme Court just recently tossed the Indiana Secretary of State out of office because he uh, had used a, uh, a false address uh, uh, to to file for office and uh, to vote, and uh, they literally replaced the third top office holder in the state on that basis. So in theory, it could be done. But, the, but you know, at Romney and Obama's level, they can get by with murder and anything. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like, a look at the shadow man. I mean, you go to look at an entire week of records for people that emigrated to America during that week or dis- d- disappeared from the U.S. records. No, the entire year. Only that week is missing, though. You know, yeah, Obama's I'm saying the good. entire week is missing from that year, that particular year. Only that Obama... Per- is, it's unbelievable. You have to have someone behind you that's a billionaire. You literally have to have Satan himself and his minions removing records. This is like well, uh, the most obscene every, thing ever. Every photo of Obama from his youth, every photo of his so-called family, every photo of him with his family from his early 20s on down has been photoshopped. Now, I'm sorry, that's just not, that's, that, that's not the norm. And something is very, very deeply wrong. The best story that I've heard is that his mother's real name was Joanne Newman. He's Jewish, and his father was Malcolm X. And Newman's family were, were well-known. She had an uncle that was a very famous communist, and, of course, Malcolm X was the black communist. And he was a friend of the then-president of Indonesia, Chicago, who was a very... Suharto, uh, yeah, Suharto. Yeah. And he was sent to... Uh, they sent her to uh, Indonesia for uh, childbirth, and then they raised Obama in the presidential palace. And uh, whether that's true or not, you know, even that I don't know, but that, that makes the most sense of everything I've seen. In any case, uh, it is absolutely outrageous that nobody in the federal judiciary has slapped this down, and no state judge has. But uh, we, we, what's coming down now is going to uh, uh, it, it's so bad. They're preparing for for civil war. They're preparing for a total economic collapse. And I keep getting reports from multiple sources, uh, some inside sources, that military that, that for instance, uh, the, the all the Russians that they're sending in to for for joint operations in Colorado, that that's only a tiny yeah, tip but, but of a much bigger this is, force. This is, like a, this is like a movie, though. What I think, and I'm going to say this prophetically, I think we're on the verge of war because we're going to have the outbreak of peace. And it's going to be a false peace like the Isaiah 18 prophecy of that I shall annul your covenant with death, which means we're literally on such a horrifying junction where all the military leaders, even those that are hardened, uh, you know, Israeli leaders hardened five-star generals in America. People have seen death, committed murder, and have marched troops in and armies to the jaws of destruction. And they're holding back and going, oh, my gosh, we don't want to do this. Well, some are. Others aren't. That's the scary part. Uh, there's enough that, there's you, enough that won't. There's enough that won't that I really believe they think they can stop gap because the, the Satan wants to have what I call a hiccup a pause in this disaster. And that disaster will be held back for the time of Jacob's trouble, the final seven years prophesied in Daniel that are coming when the sacrifices started. Welcome back to the Nutramedical Report. We have Tim Alexander and also the publicist for Jonathan Kahn, who I'm sure is probably attending to his wife, who's probably having either very violent Braxton Hicks contractions, which you're warning, or the actual thing for delivery of their baby. A very amazing thing, because the birth of an idea, the birth of a prophecy is happening with the book, The Harbinger, The Ancient Mystery That Holds the Secret of America's Future by Jonathan Kahn. And his publicist, your name uh, is? Uh, my name is Woodley Aguse, Dr. Bill. Woodley Aguse. Okay, now Woodley, uh, the, uh, this book has uh, taken off like a rocket. I guess it's a number of people are kind of grasping uh, and to understand the message which comes is crystallized down to the prophecy of Isaiah chapter 9 10 uh, to all the various things that are surrounding this and I do have the book the harbinger it was an interesting thing that I literally for the past three months I was going around my home waking up with dreams and not even understanding or even knowing about Jonathan actually seeing this book cover laying around my home at night and I get up in the middle of the night and go looking around well where's this book it's laying around my home 
And then finally, when I got special guests contacting me, and I looked and said, oh my gosh, that's the book. I knew nothing about Jonathan Cahn. So this is literally since like January of this year. Right, you know, I was having these things. I told my wife, I said, I'm looking for this book called Harbinger. I said, did somebody send it to me? Because I have all kinds of you know, radio show placement people to send me books, and I knew nothing. And reading this now perfectly parallels the first chapter of the scroll prophecy against America. And so I wanted you to tell us this, what, how your experiences are with Jonathan and what's happened with the book and what it means about America's future, because we're literally hanging in the balance now. America is literally constitutions hanging by a thread. We are at the time when, with Tim Alexander, our military uh, and geopolitical analyst uh, here on right now, Jim uh, Tim has actually consulted with the Israeli military, with the American military, uh, and is a history, history and geopolitical professor. We're literally walking forward, literally walking forward to the uh, to the time of Jacob's trouble, which is about to start momentarily. So tell us about your experiences with Jonathan and how they can get the book. Well, uh, the, the Harbins, well, first of all, thank you, Dr. Bill, for, um, for having me on the air with you. Uh, the book has literally taken uh, the publishing world by storm. Uh, it, it's, it's, it's definitely an anomaly. Um, you know, to them, but to, to those of us with spiritual eyes, we know that this is something that we believe that the, the Messiah is, is, is revealing to his church and, and also to the world. Uh, the Harbinger, it released uh, the first week of January, and we obviously knew that the, there was something special about the book when um, the way it was acquired. Uh, it's very prophetic in nature. Uh, Jonathan Kahn has, has used the fictional narrative in, in order to explain the message to make it palatable for anybody. Uh, it, it's quite the page turner. Uh, when the book released, it, it immediately uh, jumped on the New York Times bestseller list, and it's been on there ever since. Um, it has now been over 15 weeks, and the book has charted every single week. On, right. On so, the in other words, it's written in a, yeah. it's written as a uh, as a fictional book, but it's based on reality. The reality of the interpretation of what. 9-11 means, in other words. Absolutely. And it's so written it's as a dialogue to teach people what this dialogue means. Who is the dialogue between in the book? Oh, it's between uh, the, the the two main characters. There's a prophet, uh, and there's also a, a journalist. And, and, and in the story, or in the narrative, uh, there's there's nine harbingers that, re, that are revealed to this man by the prophet. Uh, it's based, of course, in New York City, uh, primarily, and and all the mysteries from from nine eleven to the collapse of the global economy, uh, you know, from terrorism, uh, what modern day terrorism, all of that is 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 definitely decoded, if you will, uh, yeah, yeah. in a that's way a, that, that that anybody can understand it. That's a powerful way to kind of uh, teach, just like the ancient narrators were teaching using stories or a uh, a fictional way to actually make a dialogue so people can get into the dialogue and then understand what it means is. Uh, I'm going to make a little change here for a second and read something, which is the the first chapter of the scroll, which has 12 chapters, and this first prophecy is against America, which is literally I call the bookend of history. The first republic, which is the only government acceptable to God, where your rights come from your creator, not from any government, the last republic is America. There's no other republic, like the Republic of Iran and all these other republics, a republic is a government where the least is protected from the majority. And here's the, the first chapter. I'm just going to read portions of it. The words of William, son of William, in the line of Aaron, who was among the physicians of Colorado, which he saw concerning America in the days of Clinton, president of America, two years before Y2K. Thus saith the Lord, have I not called you from before the day of your birth in 1900, two score, ten and second year? Did I not say to you at the time of the end, you would know and you will tell my people? Did you not see from the eighth year from the gates of heaven and high above my blue jewel of the earth how I will rain down judgment upon this world? Did not the prophets of old tell of such a day, but those who call themselves my people said, Prophesy not, but tickle our ears with comforts and ever-increasing self-righteousness and the power of the Holy One of Israel. Did I, Jesus, did not show you these things that must happen so that all mercy, grace, and justice is served, and then the end shall surely come? Did not fireballs rise all over my blue jewel, heat, brimstone, and the red smoke of the abyss rolled as a scroll across the horizon to cover in deepest darkness? Let there be two score years from the day that you, my servant, have been called until these days of wrath and the evil one are cast upon the earth, for he knows that his time is short, and grace it is wrath. When my angel cast him down in the abyss, 
Surely he will never rise, for my kingdom will be from everlasting to everlasting. I, the servant Lord of hosts, do declare that the day of the Lord is near, even at the doors. From the going forth of this world, there sh- there will be a times, 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 and half a times, until the great and terrible day of wrath of the Lamb. For in the fullness of the Gentile times, the prayers of the saints rise up as a fragrant incense to my nostrils, and I am stirred, and there will be no more time that the Spirit will strive with the spirits of men. And this is a mystery. My wrath is to see my face and be forever forgotten from my body, the church. The wrath of the evil one is to steal, kill, and destroy until the fullness of wrath, six trumpets, six bowls, and six vials. Only when I break the seals may the wrath of the evil one be poured out upon those who bear the mark and worship the bearer of light and not the creator. I am the Holy One who died and shed the living waters of life that you would never thirst, but you would not drink. Therefore you will receive my wrath, which is the seventh trumpet, the seventh bowl, and the seventh vial. In completing your iniquity, and I decree a separation as an adulterous bride forever from her groom. This alone is my wrath upon a dying people in a passing world. And he said, Thus saith the Lord, For thou, O nation, which appears as a lamb, but speaks with the voice of a dragon, you who have a sea of my word, but do not drink. Thy transgressions have called out to my ears for judgment. You, America, who call the world the word of my testament to the world, have taken your hearts far from me. Hear this word that the Lord has spoken against you, O children of America, which I have brought up from all the lands of persecution. Your nation I have set above all other nations as a light of truth and justice. For you feared my words. You were children of light and not of darkness. Therefore I will punish you for your iniquities. Today I blow a trumpet for my people. Come out of her daughter of Babylon. She has made the whole earth drunk with her wine of outrageous profits of every stock option, dividend, and contract. You who rob the poor, crush the weak, and sell with insider information while you convince the foolish enough to believe your lies and buy until their wealth is dust and sand that has fallen between their fingers. The evil one stalks the prey, and I reveal it to my servants, the prophets. Those who hear these words, who heed and obey, will escape through the days of trouble, as my people did in the land of Goshen when I sent the plagues upon the land of Egypt. Proclaim in the streets of Islam and Russia that America knows not how to do right, I send among you Gorbachev, who seeks to tell you another gospel, and you write the earth charter as your new commandments. He bears a green cross and defiles the cross I bore for you, my people. Because you have forsaken your first love, America, I will send you global eco-communism and Islamic terror. Did I not tell you before it was that the city of Seven Hills would send one with mitre and scepter of a shepherd to lead away all those who would not uh, love the truth? And he knows me not. But you, O wayward people, did follow the harlot of Babylon, all you daughters of harlotry. Were not those I gave my servant Moses enough law to condemn all those upon the earth, that none are righteous, not even one? Did I not write on the flesh of your hearts my commandments to love your God with all your heart, soul, and mind, and love your neighbor as yourselves? You made yourselves righteous in your own eyes. I call upon these peoples of oil and fire for judgment upon this nation, for America knows not to do right. You, America, who store up and prepare violence against your own people and plot to inter them in concentration camps and make covenants with the illuminated sons of Satan, I have found, judged you and found my cup of wrath full of anger against you. You, O America, who conspire to spoil the bread and steal the light, to place a mark on all your people, I have this against you. And I want to jump to the end of the chapter to read this last word. Weep, you nations afar off. Woe, woe, woe. Great was the daughter of Babylon. By her sons of the illuminated one and by their stock market, many nations have become rich. In one day has come destruction to the cities of glass and steel, like mountains of light. This is what the Sovereign Lord says. Go for once more to a hard and arrogant people, a righteous people, full of purpose and plans, with my word on their lips, but a curse in their hearts. Turn, you sheep, from the pathway that leads to destruction and become my people again. And I will turn to you and heal your land and set my tent over you, and you will be my bride. But if you do not soon turn, then in the day of my wrath, I will set my face against you, and you will become only a whisper in the darkness of America. Blessings, everyone. Repent. Shalom. God bless.